It is March Madness. Time to get these brackets in. Ari Alexander, Chancellor Johnson, we are going to spend some time with you breaking down these brackets. See if the Houston Cougars have a real chance of winning the NCAA tournament. I think both of us kind of think we do. So let's start in the top portion of the Midwest region. We see the University of Houston facing Northern Kentucky. So my big thing with this game, Chancellor, I don't think Marcus Sasser should play. Or put him out there the first four minutes. You get to that under-16 timeout, how's the groin feeling? Anything? You good? If he says, ah, you know, a little sore, a little tight, whatever, sit. No offense to Western, to Northern Kentucky. I don't even know what Kentucky they are. No offense <laughs> to the Northern Kentucky Norse. You're not beating Houston. I don't think they need Marcus Sasser in this game. I don't think they need Marcus Sasser for this game, but it is important to know, of course, with groin injuries, there nothing. That's nothing to play with. Groin injuries have uh, can, can plague you long term, and so I think that you know, I'm I'm on the same page as you. I think they can definitely handle Northern Kentucky because if you can't, then you have no shot of making the Final Four with or without Marcus Sasser. But I think you know, led by Jamal Shedd there, um, I think they can get the job done and continue continue on to play, face either a tough Iowa or an Auburn squad. Yeah, let's go to the next section. So I'm from the Iowa City area. I'm an Iowa fan. And I'm going to tell guy. you right now, I have no confidence in the Hawkeyes. <laughs> One, Auburn is in Birmingham. They're going to be playing in a big home crowd. Bruce Pearl's an ex-Iowa assistant a long, long time ago and left under some circumstances where he wasn't too happy with them. He's going to want to beat the Hawkeyes. They lose games they shouldn't lose. I have no faith in their defense. I got Auburn taking on Houston in that second game. I agree with you on that. Auburn, that's practically a home game for them, being right there in Birmingham, sticking kind of there into that southern Alabama area there. So uh, I'm going to go with Auburn. Obviously, you just mentioned Bruce Pearl was one of the better coaches we have in the entire nation. I think um, what they've been able to do over the SEC uh, conference and they, what they've been able to do and what they've been able to accomplish, I think uh, I'm taking them over Iowa in that 8-9 matchup. We bring back that section of the bracket that's got UH in it. Let's take a look at the bottom portion of that little piece there. They got Miami and Drake. I like Drake in the upset here. Drake from Des Moines, Iowa here. I think that's one of the ripe for at 12-5 upset. Indiana, Kent State. I don't have a strong opinion on it, but I think Indiana's <laughs> got uh, some good scores that can leave them forward. So I'm not going to lie and pretend I watched a bunch of Drake games all right. day long, but I do know Miami had a really good ACC um, conference run over throughout the season. And with Indiana, you have Mike Woodson there, uh, former NBA coach and what he, the job that he's been able to do with Indiana there in the Big Ten. Um, so I'm going to go with Miami. No upsets so far in my brackets. I'll go with Miami being Drake, and I'll take Indiana over Kent State. But Kent State is a really good team. They um, are one of the better mid-majors of the year. So I wouldn't be shocked if Kent State is able to top Indiana, but I'm going to go with Miami and Indiana to start in that first round there. Sweet 16 portion. Obviously, I think I got Houston going through. I like Indiana just because I think I know a little bit more about them than some of that those bottom half schools. I don't think Houston would have too much trouble with Indiana. I got Houston moving on to the Elite Eight. Uh, to me, Houston – you can pencil them into at least an Elite Eight. I think yeah. with their defense and with their experience. They have a lot of guys who have been there, done that. Matter of fact, the sixth man of the year for the AAC, <laughs> Reggie Chaney, he was um, he was started on that Final Four team just a couple of seasons ago. Now he's coming off the bench. They have a lot of experience now. Mind you, you talk to Kevin Sampson, he'll mention some of those freshmen there, guys like Terrence Arsenault and, and guys like Jairus Walker. But I think Jairus Walker is the type of guy that's made for the big stage. He he performs well both on both ends of the floor. So I wouldn't be shocked um, to me if they go all the way to the Final Four, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. But to me, I have Houston advancing to at least the Elite Eight minimum. Let's check out the bottom half of that Midwest region here. We've got the two-seed Texas Longhorns, mm. which is a really tough matchup if they get that far to face Houston. Let's look at the top half here, though. Mississippi State and Pitt. Iowa State has come on really strong toward the back half of the year. I like them. I don't like Xavier as much in that game against Iowa State. Sean Miller in the tournament, has had trouble with Arizona with more talented teams than he has in Xavier now. I got Iowa State advancing onto the Sweet 16. This bottom half is fun. I like both Texas and Texas A&M. I would take the Longhorns to that Sweet 16. So you don't trust Sean Miller and Xavier, even though uh, the heck of a year that Xavier had this year. You don't trust Sean Miller and that Muskie team. I've seen way too many Sean Miller <laughs> NCAA tournament games. I've also seen Iowa State play a little bit. Sure. I got them knocking Xavier out. I don't blame you, but to me, the intrigue there in that Midwest region is at the bottom of the bracket between Texas a and m and a potential Texas round of 32 matchup. The NCAA committee oh, yeah. knew exactly what they were doing when they kind of drafted that bracket there. 
Listen, I thought Texas A&M was one of the more underrated squads all season long. They have really great athleticism, and they're a very physical team. What Buzz Williams has been able to do with them all season has been really impressive. And they had one of the – obviously, they finished near the top of the SEC during the regular season and in the tournament. They got to the championship game before they got blasted by Alabama. And Alabama is the number one overall right. seed for a reason. I wouldn't be shocked if in that game we get a preview of that kind of SEC, you, you know, matchup before they before those two teams get there. I wouldn't be surprised if A and M actually topples um, Texas in that matchup. I really like Marcus Carr and the job that the interim head coach for UT has done uh, with them all season long. But once again, I, I like what A and M has been able to do this season, and in that matchup, I'm willing to go A and M over UT in that one. And. Let's look at this uh, section here. I got Iowa State, Texas in that Sweet 16. I'm going to take Texas into the Elite Eight, so I'm, I'm looking for a Houston, Texas matchup, a local matchup here. I wouldn't be shocked if either, like, the winner of AM, UT, I think, will go on to take on Houston, and that, and that was an Elite Eight matchup yeah. by the time we get to that point. So you will get a big Texas showing in that crowd uh, in that one. Uh, so that should be fun. But, uh, man, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Xavier can, can get there as well. But, Give me a and I'm sticking with my opinion there. I know it's early. Ask me tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, it changes. Opinion can change. Yeah. <laughs> but so far, we're this is like this is cursor. You know, it's a cursory sure. look. So let's go on to the next region. We've got the South region. This is actually the top left part of the bracket. But we started with Houston, of course. Mm -hmm. Alabama's your number one overall seed. I'm looking at these eight teams here. College of Charleston had more than 30 wins this year. They have been really good. A little smaller conference. I kind of like that 12-5. Virginia slows you down down. Yep. Nothing else stands out to me. I think Alabama just runs through this section. I agree. Alabama, they've been one of the best teams all season long, of course, with Brandon Miller and Nate Oates leading that charge there for the Crimson Tide. Virginia, they don't really impress me. Now, mind yeah. you, they have a lot of experience, um, especially with their point guard, who seems like he's been in the college for 12 years. So and they slow you down. They slow you down, yeah. but I've seen lesser teams beat them before. Right. And so, with their head coach there, he's been there for a long time. He has a lot of experience. We know he knows how to win at the NCAA tournament. But I wouldn't be shocked if San Diego State coming out of, you know, um, the Midwest, that Midwest area there, um, if they can beat Virginia in that one. Um, so I'll have San Diego State beating Virginia in that round of 32, and then I'll go Alabama basically around the table all the way to I got Charleston knocking out. So I like that 12-5 mm. over there again. We'll see. The 12-5s haven't been as good, I think, in the recent years. But uh, this just doesn't look like it presents a challenge for Alabama in this part. Let's go look at the bottom half of that south I think region. Alabama probably has the best region or the oh, easiest yeah. region to get out of. And you should as the number one overall seed. Yeah. Let's look at the bottom half of that south region and who presents a challenge maybe for Alabama as we get into the later rounds. The two seed in this section is the Arizona Wildcats. Mm. Who I think this might be the year for them. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I cover them for a long time. And, and it, every year that should have been the year, and again, this was Sean Miller coaching them and not Tommy Lloyd, and last season they played Houston. They had one of the top picks in the draft. It was a guy who can score at the NBA level. And the Cougars still beat them. So I don't know how sold I am on Arizona without their lead scorer from last season. I really like Arizona this year. I think they have one of the better players in the country in Tubelis. Um, one of the uh, it's a big four for them. He was actually yeah. a Pac-12 player of the year for them. Also, Courtney Ramey. A lot of guys um, from Texas might know him as. He was one of the stars yep. for UT last year. He hit that big shot against UCLA on Saturday night to actually help them win that Pac-12 championship. I like the formula that Arizona has there. Physical team, of course, uh, you have uh, Kerr as well. Kerr Car Carissa. Yeah. Car Carissa. <laughs> Kelly Larson. Me, they got all these foreign to, guys. To me, Kerr Carissa, I was actually talking about in mind. He reminds me of those throwback college vessel players. The, the guys that, they're really annoying. And you yeah. hate watching them, but yeah. they're, they're good, so you kind of have to respect their game. Kind of like the Marshall Hendersons. Now, mind you, it's big levels between right. Marshall Henderson and Kirk Rissa, but still, he kind of reminds me of like you know the Ty Hansbros. Like Once again, they're really annoying, but they're good players, and you have to respect them. Once again, I think Arizona has one of the more complete teams, and they're really big. It's going to be a hard to match up against the Arizona team. Um, so I have them actually going to the Final Four and actually upsetting Alabama in that region there. I don't think Arizona. <laughs> I, just the athleticism, because they're going inside with Azulis to Bellis. Um, they got, I mean, Kreese is one of those guys 
where he could hit five threes or he could go 0 for 7 and have four fouls in the first half. Like, you just don't know what you're getting um, in that bottom half of the South region with the Arizona Wildcats. I'm not a huge fan of how deep they could necessarily go. I think they have talent. Uh, they have a second-year coach in Tommy Lloyd. Tommy Lloyd has been fantastic for them. Actually, replacing in the regular John season, Lloyd. yeah. Regular season, yes, but, but but think about it. But last year they ran into the Houston. Look, they ran into Houston, and even in the postseason. Back-to-back Pac-12 tournament championships. That says a lot. That's not that's not regular UCLA, season. That's not regular not, season. Yeah. UCLA's another number two seed there. It's the UCLA is a good team. I feel like I'm winning you over. I, I can see. Nah. Well, I want to see the rest of the bracket. I want to see who <laughs> because if I let's pull it up for you. Let's unroll your unroll, unroll your paper you. here. Okay. 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 What do we it's got? Actually, um, let's see here. What did you do to that paper? Jeez. All right. So let's look at. <laughs> Let's look at Arizona at the bottom of this bracket. So Arizona is taking on Princeton in the first round. You also have Baylor taking on UC. There you SB. go. That's who it is. That's They're going to lose to Baylor. That's who it is. Baylor has all this NBA talent on this team. Baylor has won a national title before. They have a coach with much more tournament experience. Mm-hmm. There have been years where they haven't gone as far as they should have, but they got, you know, Keontae George and like Jalen Bridges. That is a fun matchup between Baylor and Arizona. That's my team that's going to take out Arizona. I had Arizona going to the Final Four, actually. So that's going to stick with my pick there. I really like Arizona uh, coming out of there. If we can get an Arizona-Baylor game, that's going to be one of the better games in the tournament. We've now covered, what, Houston, Texas, Baylor, Texas A&M. So four of the six schools from the state of Texas. The other two are Texas Southern, who's a 16th seed. And Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. I think, obviously, as a 1-16 seed has ever beat a 1 seed, either of those teams are going to have a tough time advancing. But shout out to Texas Southern. If Absolutely. You look at their season, they didn't have a good regular season. No, they had season. a down year. Actually, I was talking about, like, I was saying to myself that, man, like, it's been a pretty a down year, a disappointing year for TSU. Then all they do is run through the SWAC tournament. They got the number one seed out of there really quickly. It was yeah. a blowout game for that. And then the last game on Saturday night to advance to the championship, they also um, put, a, put together a really good performance to advance. Johnny Jones... And the Texas Southern squad, they've been there before facing these big teams. They're not going to be scared of an Alabama, but Alabama's still going to beat them. I mean, they did beat Arizona State this <laughs> they, season. Yeah. I'm <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you see there uh, the winner of Texas Corpus Christi, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and Southeast Missouri State, actually decent region of the country for basketball, and Cape Girardeau down there. They'll have a decent, decent year now and then. I think it's really been impressive what Texas Southern has done because you're the eight seed. In the SWAC, you had a really down year considering that they were, have been the SWAC powerhouse. They always go in at like 2-11 and 11 in the conference because they play these good teams. They play in Arizona State. They play Oregon's. They play these yeah. big-name schools. I remember when I was in, in Tucson, they came to play Arizona. And so Johnny Jones and just their whole program, I think going back two, three coaches, they've just loaded up non-conference. So when you play Prairie View or when you play Mississippi Valley State, you're used to seeing bigger, more physical, more athletic guys, better shooters, more versatile types of players. And that didn't help this year. They were still the number eight seed in the SWAC, but you got to feel for for an Alcorn State who they're the one seed. They should be able to beat an eight, and they just get knocked down by Texas Southern who goes on and wins that conference. Well, congrats to TSU on winning your SWAC championship. You get to take on Purdue, who's um, <laughs> who's also the number one seed there. Obviously, they have uh, in their big man Edie, who is um, national player of the year. Type of guy there, yeah. And, seven, you know, four. Seven, seven four, seven four. Victor <laughs> Wembanyama size. <laughs> Johnny Walker and, and Carl Nicholas they're gonna have their hands full trying to stop him. Uh, but that should be a I, look. I think it should be a fun matchup. But congrats to TSU for doing it yet another year in a row. I got Bama uh, Baylor in my elite eight in this this region. You got Bama Arizona. I have Bama Arizona in that region. Then on the other side, I have U of H in Texas A and M. All right, let's move on to the East region if we can. There, as we see the bottom half, my Missouri Tigers. I don't see her going that far. Look at this region. We got Texas Southern, Purdue. I got Purdue moving on. This eight nine game. We were talking about it at our desks. It's fun. Yeah, I like. I actually like Memphis to upset Purdue. And then I don't have strong feelings about this bottom section here. But I got Duke moving on and. Uh, Duke winning this little section. Listen, you want to talk about an upset? I could actually see it being Oral Roberts. What uh, Max Adams? Yeah. He's like he's one of the better. Fourteenth year in college, <laughs> but he's one of the better yeah. players in college. And uh, actually, we uh, here in Houston got a chance to see uh, Oral Roberts earlier this season when Oral Roberts came to the Cedar Center. They actually were able to slow down Adams uh, in that game, but he's one of the better players in the entire tournament. But 
In that East region, I'm looking at Memphis and FAU. I think FAU is one of the better mid-majors of this, of this tournament, in the, in the NCAA tournament. But Memphis, I think Kendrick Davis, he could be the best player on the floor in any given game. We saw that yeah. one Sunday against the University of Houston where he gave Houston buckets, 20 points in the first half, and then continued on in the second half as well. He is a game changer. He's a game breaker, and he's really clutch, which you need in the NCAA tournament around this time of the year. He's made for March. I really like Kendrick Davis, and that's why I actually have Memphis upsetting Purdue and going to the Elite Eight. I, I agree with you there. You have a little bit of a CUSA bias, I feel like. You <laughs> love those, like, the North Texases, the FAU That's who won that UAB. conference. Yeah, the UAB I'm so sad with Jelly Walker. Jelly Walker. Yeah. He's another guy made for March as well. Let's look at the bottom half of the East region. We got Kentucky Providence, not super interested in that one. Kansas State, <laughs> but that's just not. Uh, Kansas State, Montana oh, State. Mark. Yeah, I like Marquette coming out of this. Uh, Vermont, no TJ Sorrentine coming off the bench there. This is, uh, to me, this is not a super impressive section of the bracket. Uh, Kentucky, obviously a lot of talent. Have not been good this year. They got Oscar Shibway as one of the best players in the country. But, again, John Calipari has done nothing with it. I was reading some scouting reports on that. It's, it's like the guy runs an offense that, that doesn't work after 20 years. They've been doing the same thing. Ed Cooley over there is a great coach at Providence. Uh, Kansas State has had a good year. But out of here, man, Shaka Smart, Marquette, job, Golden man. Eagles. I like them uh, to face Memphis. In uh, did I have Memphis in the Elite? I don't know. It'll come up later. <laughs> well, you have two. Uh, Duke. Yes. You have two coaches who were candidates for National Coach of the Year and Shaka Smart for Marquette. And also the job that um, Kansas State's coach has been able to do uh, all season long. He, they, Kansas State, the Kansas State Wildcats went into UT in Austin and blew them out of the water. They finished near the top of the uh, Big 12 as well. I actually have Kansas State. Making out of this kind of the bottom portion of this bracket, I like what Shaka Smart's been able to do with Marquette running through the Big East this year, and they also won the Big East uh, tournament over the weekend as well. But I have Kansas State. I like their man defense. They have a lot of really good players on that squad. I'm going with Kansas State to make it out and get to the lead eight. So you got what, K-State Memphis? I have K-State Memphis. I got Marquette Duke. Let's move on to our final region here. That is the West. This is where Kansas is, who just got blown out by Texas in the Big 12 final. I like Kansas uh, to make it decently far, although I think in this section here Arkansas is super talented I can see an Arkansas over Kansas upset in the battle of which state owns the word Kansas uh, and then I, I like UConn here I think UConn has had a, a sneaky good season Iona could pull the upset. Never discount Rick Pitino, but I think I got UConn coming out of this section. To me, I really like Kansas. I like uh, the experience, um, not only from the coaching staff, but also the players. Uh, obviously, Bill Self, he's you know, he, he won it he's last year. Self. He's Bill Self. Yeah. You, know, you can make the argument he's the best coach in the entire country. Um, and they have just a really good, talented squad there. A deep team, really good guard play. They also have some strong forwards as well. I really like Kansas. I know they're really disappointed that they, that they did not get the number two overall seed because they would have loved to have played uh, in Kansas City um, and, and that region. But, the, you know, they'll draw Howard in that one. Obviously, Arkansas, Illinois, which you just talked about there. Arkansas has a really good team as well. Um, St. Mary's uh, on the West Underrated. Coast. Underrated. Underrated team. Um, um, they finish at the top of the WCC, and then you have uh, UConn Iona, as you just mentioned, one of the better coaching matchups mm -hmm. that you'll see all tournament long. I wouldn't be shocked if Rick Pitino gets the upset over UConn. But listen, Dan Hurley, school. Dan Hurley also, and what UConn's been able to do in the Big East, they had a really good season. So I'm still going to, leave, I'm still going to lean on Kansas and to get to at least the lead eight. Let's look at the bottom section of the West here and what we have. We have UCLA as a two seed. Uh, How about them Sun Devils, baby? Yeah. I actually, so here's the thing. I actually like your Sun Devils to beat Nevada because I have zero faith in Steve Alford as a coach. Uh, and then I have them beating TCU because they have uh, they just lost one of their better players. Eddie Lampkin uh, is not going to be playing for them. Kid from Morton Ranch here. They got some kind of internal strife that's sort of going on in that program. And they were really impressive in last year's tournament. Lampkin was a big part of that. They have some good players. I kind of like Arizona State. State to move on. They've beaten Arizona. They've had some impressive wins. Um, Gonzaga uh, is Drew Timmy is in his 15th year of college there. Uh, they got a really impressive squad. I kind of like Boise State pulling the upset over Northwestern. 
I'm not that impressed with UCLA, so out of this section, I got Gonzaga. See, I'm completely opposite of you. Because you're a Pac-12 really, guy. I, I am a Pac-12 guy, and I've watched a lot of UCLA this year. Obviously, you have Jaime Hacker, Jaime Hikes Jr. coming back, who seems like another guy who's been in college basketball for a really long yeah. time. Um, he also is another guy that can be the best player on the floor any given uh, game there. So um, I, I really like UCLA. They gave Arizona a really tough draw on Saturday night in that Pac-12 championship, but that's another team with a lot of experience. Also, of course, Tiger Campbell won the best point guards and the nation. It's another guy who's been in college forever. Uh, it, it seems like, but see, that's the thing because we don't really see guys stay at that program right. for a long time. They might play, uh, f- use all four years of their eligibility, but usually not the same program. And that's what you get in UCLA and Jaime Hawkins Jr. and Tiger Campbell. A really good backcourt pairing there between the two. Um, TCU and Arizona State. TCU, a really good uh, man defensive team. But listen, Arizona State and Nevada, every year there's always one of the 11 seeds that yep. win in the first four round and then make a run to at least the Sweet 16. Arizona State is could potentially be one of those teams. I'm not just saying that because of ASU. I'm not putting my money on it, right. but they have a guy named Desmond Cambridge Jr., who is another guy made for March. He's the dude that hit the half-court shot, against, shot Arizona. against Arizona. Yeah. And he continues to make big shots in a lot of different games. He's had a, He had a really good uh, Pac-12 tournament run as well. I wouldn't be shocked if Arizona State can get through that first four top TCU and then get to the Sweet 16, I don't expect them to go too far. Um, but, of course, you know, you got a guy, you got teams like Gonzaga, teams that have been there before, but I'm still sticking with UCLA to advance through this bottom portion of the West region. All right, so you got, uh, what is this, UCLA and Kansas? I have UCLA and Kansas, and I actually have UCLA beating Kansas. Okay, and then it looks like mine would be Gonzaga and UConn. So let's go on to our Elite Eights here. I think, Chancellor, you go first. Explain yourself. So you have Alabama and Arizona, as I touched on earlier. I really like um, the complete team that Arizona has. Um, Obviously, with Brandon Miller from Alabama, he's going to be the best player on the floor. But I like, I think this is the year. This is coming from an Arizona State guy. I despise the Wildcats, but I really like what Tom Lewitt has been able to do this season. And on the bottom region, Memphis and Kansas State. Once again, I think Kendrick Davis is able to lead Memphis to the Elite Eight, but I think that's where Kansas State um, actually ends up beating them in that one that in a 8-3 to three matchup. And then, as you see, Houston taking on Texas A&M. I have Houston beating A&M in a Lone Star showdown in Kansas and UCLA. I think this will be the best matchup out of all the Elite Eight games. And I really like the shot making of UCLA with once again Jaime Hackett Jr. Just give it to him in the mid post. He's get, he get, how do you want it? Basically, yeah. from that it's kind of that throwback style of the triple threat, kind of like what Carmelo Anthony used to do, uh, but not you know not the same. A smaller yeah, version. Yeah, a smaller yeah, yeah. version of that. But late in games when. The, the margin of error in these March Madness games is very slim, and I, and I like a guy who can go get a bucket late, and that's what you get in UCLA. And then I'll stop there before we get into the Final Four aspect of it. Well, I mean, it's already up you there. See so it, right? we got, oh, yeah, you, sure, sure, why not? So I got Houston winning it all. Uh, Houston taking <laughs> on Arizona in a rematch of last year's Sweet 16. I think Houston having that home court advantage will really uh, pay off for them. And I think this is the year that Kelvin Sampson and squad get it done in their own crib right here in Houston, Texas at NRG Stadium. Book it. Arizona Wildcats like to call Las Vegas where they play the conference tournament McHale North. There is no way they're turning NRG <laughs> into McHale, Texas. Let's go to my Elite Eight here. I've got Alabama taking down Baylor, Marquette over Duke. This, this Marquette-Duke region, uh, I'm not super impressed with them. I got Houston taking down the University of Texas in the Elite Eight. I think Texas is just so athletic and so long, and they've got shot makers, and they have That's that cool. five-star talent. And uh, the way that Rodney Terry has coached this team after Chris Beard left has been really impressive. I think they make it all the way to the Elite Eight. I just don't think you can beat Houston at the little things. Rebounding, defense, 50-50 balls, all those things that Kelvin Sampson has an advantage as a coach that he teaches his guys over basically any other coach in the country. Uh, down there in the West, I believe it's UConn, Gonzaga. Again, not, not, I don't have like strong opinions on this, but I got Gonzaga in the Final Four. I like Houston over Gonzaga for, for those things that I mentioned. I just think that they play harder than uh, Mark Few's squad. And then uh, I think Alabama destroys Marquette in the regional. Then you got the rematch. rematch. Uh, and I think this time Houston comes out on top. Alabama has been grinding through a season where they were you know, the best team in the country for a long time. They beat 
in Houston, and then they had all of the off-court stuff with their best player, Brandon Miller, where they had to, to take players off of their team, where Nate Oates is having to constantly answer questions, and I think they've been winning. They got blown out by AM, but at some point, I think that that just wears on you mentally and where it comes into wear on you physically. And in this type of tournament where it gets ratcheted up, you're going to hear it every single week. Especially the, the higher you climb. In that exactly. And I think their talent carries them to the Final Four. I like their matchup against a Marquette in that game. Their talent carries them. But I think just from a mental standpoint, when you have two evenly matched teams, I know Alabama's 2-0 and against Houston the last two years, but these have been like insanely close games both years. I think from that standpoint, Houston comes out on top with their home court behind them at NRG. We're both picking the Houston Cougars to win the title. So naturally, they probably won't even get to the Sweet 16. Yeah, just, right? just because we have the curse there. The Iowa Hawkeyes <laughs> finally make it. <laughs> well, listen, the rematch between Alabama and Houston is important to remember. Houston actually was in control for most of that ball game there before they let Alabama come back. Now, Brandon Miller actually didn't have a really good game there. I was really excited to see how he would fare in that matchup, but Houston was able to kind of slow him down. But it was the little things for Houston as, or for, excuse me, for Alabama as they continued to chip away at that lead there before ultimately. Um, you know, beating Houston uh, here in their own home court. But Houston had a chance late. They had um, they, they had a chance to win that game. They just were not able to get it done. But I think they are able to do it in that rematch there in a the potential championship game. Now, change of gears here, I, I think it is a really good chance that we will see at least one Texas team advance to a potential Final Four, whether that's yeah. UT, whether that's A&M, or who we ultimately think is U- University. Or Baylor. Don't, yeah, or Baylor. don't sleep on Baylor. Baylor. You always tell me don't sleep on Texas A&M, so I'm telling you don't <laughs> sleep on Baylor. These are, these are good teams coming out of Texas. Six Texas schools in the NCAA tournament. Baylor, Texas A&M, Texas Houston, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and Texas Southern. Pair of those right here in the city of Houston. The Final Four is right here in the city of Houston at NRG Stadium. Chancellor Johnson, I'm Ari Alexander. Enjoy filling out those brackets. And if we can teach you anything at all, this has been a success. <laughs>